So guys, the Chess Olympiad 2024 is heating up. This is round 7. It's a top of the table clash between India and China. Everyone was anticipating a mouth-watering encounter between Gukesh and Ding Liren, which would have been a preview of the much-awaited World Chess Championship match. But as it turns out, for some strange reason, Team China decided not to play Ding Liren and it was Wei Ye who turned up to play against Gukesh. Maybe Ding did not want to reveal his preparation or maybe he was just not in form. Who knows what happened? But anyway, even Gukesh vs VE was not short of any drama. It was a really exciting game, so let's get straight into it. Now this is the deciding match from board 1 because all the other 3 games have ended in a draw so there's a lot at stake. Gukesh starts with e4 and we have the Sicilian on the board. A few more standard moves and in this position d4 is the main line and VE is an expert at playing this variation. So here, Gukesh opts a very unique idea, bishop to e2. He probably wants to get VE out of his comfort zone, so bishop e2 and then comes e5. He grabs the center and now d4 becomes even more difficult to play. Gukesh makes one more move with the bishop. He loses the tempo but gains control over these light square weaknesses in the opponent's camp. Anyway, we have bishop e7, d3, knight c6 and now Gukesh decides to go after this knight. Black castles and Gukesh wastes no time in exchanging the knight for his bishop. Generally, this is not such a good idea, but here white wants to plant his knight in the center and because of these weak squares, this is not such a bad option. So the knight jumps in, bishop e6 immediately attacks the knight, queen d2, then a6 preparing to get some counterplay on the queen side, white castles and then comes b5. Up till now, Gukesh has been very fast with his move, so he already has a significant time advantage. Now the bishop is attacked, so he slides back and then comes the sneaky little move, king to h8. Black's plan is now clear. At some point, he wants to push these pawns and attack, so he slides his king out of the firing line. Gukesh goes a3, making some room for his bishop, and then rook b8 and h3. Black plays g6, as expected. The plan is obvious, pull back the bishop and attack with these pawns. Now, if you notice, Gukesh has this opportunity to swap his knight for the bishop, and it looks like a safe option because it might become difficult later on to deal with these two deadly bishops. But Gukesh is not interested in playing safe. He wants to maintain the imbalance. You have to take some risk to force a win and that's why he avoids going for the exchange and he prefers a more ambitious option like c3. Both the bishops slide back and then comes f5. Just look at all these aggressive pawns. Black clearly has the space advantage. The bishops are ready to fire and it seems we are setting up for a really crazy fight. So fasten your seat belts and hit that thumbs up button below this video right now. Okay, the knight jumps in, the bishop is attacked, so he goes to b8, keeping it on this diagonal. Gukesh is not the one to hold back, so he decides to open up the position. e takes, g takes, and then comes another aggressive response, f4. He's not even afraid of opening up his king side. On the other hand, ve keeps pushing on the queen side. d takes, b takes, bishop takes, and Gukesh is a pawn up for the moment. But the positioning of black's pieces looks really good. In fact, Black could easily play something like e4, open up these beautiful diagonals, these pawns are rock solid in the center and more importantly, this knight is trapped. So not much white can do from this position. But for some strange reason, in this position, VE does not play e4, instead he just becomes greedy and grabs the pawn immediately. Now this leaves him with this terrible pawn structure and even though this knight is attacked, Gukesh can easily save it by going back to f3. VE tries knight a5, attacking the bishop along with this potential double attack, so bishop a2 is kind of forced. The knight still jumps in, bishop captures, rook captures, and Gukesh picks up this free pawn. The sweetie is out, it's a check. The pawn is also under pressure, so rook f2 adds another defender, but then rook b8 tripling down on this b2 pawn. You cannot save it, even rook b1 doesn't work because the bishop exploits this pin and white ends up in serious trouble. Therefore, in this position, Gukesh goes after the d pawn. Then takes, 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 again rook takes, and finally white takes on d6. After all these exchanges, white ends up with an extra pawn, but black has a bishop pair, whereas white is left with a pair of knights. Now this pawn is attacked, so he plays a5. Rook d8 pins the bishop, bishop takes, and then comes knight to d5. He's hitting the bishop, and along with this, another massive threat is knight e7, rook g8. Therefore, rook b1 check, king f2 and then rook d1. The knight is now pinned and Gukesh has to decide what he wants to do. One option is to attack the bishop and then exchange the bishop for his knight. Another option is to simplify even further by exchanging the rook in return for both of black's bishops. 
Gukesh decides to go with this variation and we arrive at a very challenging end game where it's a rook versus two knights. I call this challenging because it's difficult for both sides to make progress. The rook may keep attacking but it can't do much on its own. On the other hand, the knights may keep jumping around the board constantly defending each other but they are just too slow to make any progress. Anyway, again after king e3, rook g1, the king comes back to defend and as I told you, it's just a lot of shuffling with the hope to achieve some kind of a breakthrough. Finally, after a few more moves, white manages to push a4. Everything is well protected and connected like a chain. King advances, g3 blocks him off, both players just continue to maneuver their pieces, the rook goes up, then knight f3 check, the king is forced to go back, then knight d4, rook d8 pins the knight so the king moves out of the way. We have a repetition of moves, eventually Gukesh avoids it with knight e2, then rook b8, knight f4, now black always needs to be careful of such folks, so the rook comes down again, knight d5 check, king e5, then knight c3 preventing this rook d1 check. He tries to go after the pawns again but knight f3 check, h4 and everything is well defended. Rook h3, this time he attacks the other pawn, knight e2 and that is also well defended. Now f4, black is desperately trying to exchange the pawns because if he can get rid of the pawns, the more difficult it will become for white to win. Two knights alone cannot win a game so white wants to keep as many pawns as possible. Now you can't take like this because you lose the knight, therefore he attacks the rook and once he moves away, only then he captures the pawn. Rook takes on h4 and now all of a sudden we have two passed pawns and the game is wide open. Knight f3 attacks the rook and after rook h1, Guke starts pushing towards promotion. The race is on, ve also advances his h pawn, knight c3 and then h4. Then knight e4 check, king d7, another check, king d8 and here comes pawn to f6. Gukesh is slowly getting his knights up the board so that he can support this pawn march. Now we've reached a very critical point in this game and don't forget, both the players are under serious time pressure. At this point, it is very important for Ve to activate his rook with tempo. He needs to do something to stop this pawn. The king alone cannot handle all these pieces so rook d1 check would have been ideal. But Ve continues pushing his own pawn and that turns out to be a fatal mistake because it allows Gukesh to progress even further. He's just one step away from queening. Black now tries to stop him but it's already too late. With this move, he not only prepares to push forward but also attacks on h3. That's just too much for black to handle. He tries to save the pawn but again this knight interferes in between cutting off the rook and even cutting off the potential queen. Look, even if black promotes, white can get his very own sweetie and with one check after another, it becomes almost impossible for black to save this game. Therefore, in this position, he cannot allow Gukesh to promote, especially with both these pieces blocked out on the other side. So his best option is again rook d1 check. The control over this d file is very crucial for black as it can neutralize many potential checks if the rook gets in. Ve has to accept this type of a position and hope that he would be somehow able to hold Gukesh to a draw. But anyway, all that didn't happen and in this position, Ve could not find the best move. He played king e7 giving away this critical pawn. That's a big big relief for Gukesh. The pawn is gone and the game is pretty much under his control. Ideally he could have sacrificed his rook but the problem is that this pawn easily wins the game for white. So that is not an option. Therefore he tries to somehow eliminate this a4 pawn first and now before the rook can come back, these knights need to quickly run up the board and escort the pawn to promote. So Gukesh finds the best move, knight to g4. Ve tries rook a3 check, you cannot go up the board because that just allows black to sacrifice his rook and use this pawn to march forward. So basically you are left with these three squares, king e2 allows black to fork the king and knight. In fact black is just winning if the king goes to e2. If he goes to c2, black eliminates the pawn, he gives a check and reaches just in time to get rid of the other pawn. So the best move is actually king to d2 and a player of Gukesh's class wasn't going to miss this. So king d2, rook takes and then knight h6. The idea is knight g6 and then you promote. Now rook f4 doesn't work because knight g6 forks the king and the rook. Therefore black tries another check hoping for Gukesh to make an error. He goes up, we have another check. Again white could go wrong with king f4 because after rook a1, knight check, king e6, queen promotion, he has the skewer tactic and the sweetie is gone. But again, 
Gukesh is just too sharp to fall for this. Once again, he finds the perfect move, king to e4, and that's when Wei Yi resigns. The point is that after rook a4 check, king f5, rook a1, knight g6 check, king d7, and now even if he tries this rook f1 check, you always have the option to block with the knight and that's just game over. So Gukesh wins this really fascinating game and with this victory, Team India is in a great position to win the gold medal at the Chess Olympiad of 2024. Here are the latest rankings for both the Open and the Women's section. It's going to be a great moment if India wins. Do let me know in the comments which country are you from and which team are you supporting. And of course, don't forget to like and subscribe and I shall see you in the next one.